Greetings, everybody. Hi, how are you? Um, so, it's been a little while since I've done a broadcast. Uh, too long, in fact. At first, it was because I was busy prepping for FETC, FETC, and then TCEA, and those were most definitely keeping me busy. Uh, but then I had a little bit of a break, and I didn't quite get back to it as quickly as I wanted to. So, um, I got a whole bunch of stuff to show you today, and uh, we're going to play around with some holograms, and I'm going to show you how to make your own uh, hologram projector using your iPad or phone or tablet or whatever, and also how to create your own holograms to go onto those. Um, but before we do that, I just want to say uh, it's been really nice seeing everybody at FATC and TCEA and a few other conferences. And uh, next couple weeks, I'm going to be fairly busy. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to be at the ICE Conference in Illinois. Hope to see you there. I'm uh, doing a workshop there and a, uh, a session during the pre-con day. And then I head over to Kansas for the MACE Conference, where I'll be doing the keynote in a few sessions. Um, but the best part is uh, the second day on Friday, I'm just going to be hanging out at the conference and attending sessions and doing some coverage and maybe some broadcasting. So if you're going to be at ICE or at MACE, please come by and say hi. Then I get another week off and then heading over to the McCall Conference up in Michigan. I'm very excited about that. Uh, after McCall, um, uh, a little bit of time off, and then I will be heading over to the .edu Conference in Monterey, Mexico, uh, which I attended last year. It was an absolute blast. I'm thrilled to be going back there again with some uh, friends from before and some new friends. Well, maybe not new friends. Adam Bellow is going to be doing one of the keynotes there. Very excited to be seeing him again. And then also... Um, then uh, heading over to the National School Board Association Conference over in Denver. So if you're going to be at any of those, please come by, say hello, hang out a little bit. But let's get back to what we are going to be talking about today. Today is kind of like a little fun little maker project. So I was prepping this for uh, the ICE Conference, for a workshop that I'm doing there. Uh, it's going to be a little small part of it, but I figured, you know what, so long as I've got all the materials together, might as well show all of you so you could do this yourself. Now, this is something that Hall Davidson uh, shared with me, and it kind of made the rounds a little bit uh, a little while ago. It's creating a hologram projector using your phone or your iPad. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of a twist on it. Now, you may notice it's a little bit darker than usual today. Uh, the reason for that is I'm going to be showing some things that require it to be dark, and rather than running all over the basement and flicking on lights and stuff like that, I figure I'll just leave it dark, and this is it's good enough, right? You can see me, can't you? I hope. Anyway... Um, so the way that this works is uh, you're basically going to use the light from your phone or from your iPad to create a projector of sorts um, to create a hologram. Now, the key is the, the light needs something to project off, off of, to bounce off of, and then, you know, hit, hit your eyes. Normally, the light will go straight from a projector, and then it goes off of a white surface, and it bounces back over to your eyes, and it just looks somewhat flat. However, if it's on a clear surface, surface then it already somewhat has a little bit of a hologram feel to it there is actually some a hologram projector and i can't remember what it's called that actually puts a piece of glass in front of an, an, an lcd or in front of your ipad or in front of your computer and uses the light from it to project onto it and it creates a very realistic looking hologram what this does is though it you, you're actually shining light off of 45 or so 45 degree angles so that it looks like it's actually rising up off of the uh, the surface now the key is you need to actually create this sort of like little like trap is is a trap look like a pyramid with the the top kind of cut off now i did this one right here using a, a cd case so if you got a cd case or a dvd case that little hard plastic i didn't use a knife like i probably should have or an exacto blade to cut it i actually just used uh some shears that i had so you can kind of see the cracks on it but what i did was i created the you know did four you know sort of trapezoids and then taped them all together and this will sit right on top of the projector now the first time i did it you can totally see all the tape and you can see all the cracks and it worked but it wasn't necessarily all that that clear so the second time around I bought off of Amazon these sheets. Now, the, these don't look clear. And the reason they don't look clear is they actually have a plastic film on them. So it kind of protects the sheet while you're working with it, while you're cutting it out, so you don't get fingerprints all over it, which is kind of nice. And these things are nice and thick um, and a lot easier to work with than than the hard plastic of the uh, the CD case. Uh, and these things, I think I got like 30 or 40 of them for like 10 bucks. But if you have transparency uh, uh, film in your school still... Don't know why you do, 
But if you do, still somewhere on a shelf or something like that, you can totally use that. The key is you cut it out into a specific shape. Now you could just cut it out into these, uh, you know, these little trapezoids, um, and then and, and glue them together. I, I did or tape them together. I did find uh, plans though for a nice or a little bit more of a neater shape. Uh, if what you're doing, what you're going to be doing it on, is not a CD case, if it's something foldable. So then what I did was I put this, the transparency thing, right uh, on top of it, and I traced the actual shape out onto it. Uh, onto the film and then cut it around and when I cut it around I didn't actually do the uh, the little fold at the end of it so that it'll slide in neatly I decided to just tape it because I was being kind of lazy uh, but the net result is something that looks like this shape but when you fold the edges you can kind of piece it together and I think I just broke my tape but that's all right it, it, it'll it'll still work hopefully or I've got a little bit of tape right here and it's not clear, so we're just going to suffer with it, but you, you'll get the idea, right? So I'm going to put that on there, put that on there, and it'll stay together. So the net result is you get a little bit larger one. This one, size for an iPhone. That's what it's designed for. This one is designed for an iPad. You can do it as large as you want. Just kind of you know figure out the ratio. And then what you do is you have to load up a special kind of video on your uh, iPad or tablet or whatever else you're using. And the, the trick of it is that it has to be an image that's placed four, uh, placed four times in a very specific way. I'm gonna switch over to my iPivo camera over here so you can kind of see the, the iPad right there. And you can kind of see if I do this, what the image looks like. See how there's four of them right there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my camera down and I'm gonna lay this right on top of it in the middle and move this around just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better and what should happen is um, oh I need to move the iPad like that and there you go see how it's kind of projecting the hologram right there and if I move it just slightly farther back how it kind of floats above it so it's literally projecting onto this front piece of plastic but if I go at it from any angle if I were to actually turn this iPad in from any angle I'm gonna be able to see this uh, floating up above my iPad that's kind of cool it's a nice little lesson in optics and all that too um, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun to do. You could do this on your iPhone, you could do this on a tablet. Heck, you could even take a uh, monitor, like a like a bigger monitor, if you have a bigger monitor, and tip it on its side, and you can actually make a really large one or an LCD TV. Heck, you could even do it with like a, a you know 60-inch TV, put it on its side to make a really, really large hologram if you wanted to. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Your students will absolutely love making this. But the key is, to me, the video that you use to project it. After all, don't your students want to be Princess Leia and actually make their own little uh, Help Me Obi-Wan style video or you know whatever else they want to become a hologram and, and see themselves on here, right? That's what they want to do. So I, I was trying to figure out a way to do that uh, without using something like Final Cut Pro. And it dawned on me at a conference recently, I think it was at FETC when I realized this, that we video is actually perfect for uh, uh, doing this. Now, what's ironic is I've been talking about WeVideo quite a bit lately because I'm doing some work with them as a consultant and I'm talking to some of the people that work there and talking about their educational uh, you know, uh, uh, products and pricing and all that other kind of stuff. But uh, their product, uh, their, their video editor happens to be absolutely perfect for making something like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip off of the IPvo right now and switch over to... Uh, the browser so you can see we video. this is the basic we video okay um, so you've got your video editing line and I, I do a lot of different demos on here where you can make your own sort of like documentaries and so on bring your own footage from here and then edit it down and so on and snip it and make your own remixes there's a lot that you can do this and it, it's from a storytelling perspective it's absolutely phenomenal because not only does it have a very very robust video editor um, and since it's in the cloud 
cloud. You can do this on Chromebooks. You can do this on Windows, Mac, whatever. It doesn't matter. Your kids can do it from home and so on. But it also has some of these features that you'd expect out of a more powerful video editor. For example, I don't know if you can see this in the lower little corner down here. Um, I guess I could zoom in, but I'm not going to uh, deal with it right now. You can see the audio lines and so on. Um, I can actually click into there and I can unlock the track. I can actually show the levels and I can do some of these things like, you know, very granular audio control where I make it dip down and then come back up and so on. Some of the stuff that we used to do in iMovie a long time ago, um, and, 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 you know, it's kind of gone away from uh, for the sake of simplicity, but you've got extremely granular levels of control. We're not going to do most of that stuff right now. I may do a, in fact, I think I will do another just uh, uh, segment on Wii Video itself, and we'll talk more about the editor uh, in general. But for right now, what I want to do is make a hologram. Now, to make a hologram, what you need is a video of a person, preferably, ideally, wearing bright colors because they show up better, you know, because it's light. Remember, it's, it's light that's projecting there. So bright colors and on a dark background. So ideally, velvet or black velvet or something like that behind you or something soft so that you don't have any light behind you. Or you could also do it uh, uh, via green screen. The premium version of Wii Video does have a chroma key feature. So you could do it on green screen and just suck out the background. But I had for my little demo uh, project, one of my favorite subjects, is uh, a Hall Davidson. And Hall Davidson uh, had a video on the web somewhere where he was doing this little uh, demo uh, with him in front of a green screen. So he had already cut the uh, green part out so it was nothing but a black background behind him so I thought I would take this video of Hall I hope you don't mind Hall and turn him into a Hall hologram get it haha <laughs> see what I did there anyway so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, get uh, I need uh, I'm gonna I've already done it with three lines but I'm gonna show you what the fourth one so I'm gonna copy this uh, this uh, piece of video Right here, I'm going to make a new one. I, I repeated it a, a few times uh, just because uh, I wanted it to be longer when I was actually doing it on the iPad and all that. So uh, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to uh, paste it and then paste it and then paste it and then paste it. Actually, I shouldn't even do that yet. I'm going to come back and do that because I'm going to rotate it first. Okay, so I've got Hall. I'm going to click on edit now. Hall is actually right over here, this line of video, and he is facing the wrong way. What I need to do is I just need to rotate him once, then I need to move him just into the appropriate place. Now, they do have this little show grid thing and snap to grid, so I can really line him up pretty darn well. If I really want to do it mathematically, I could actually use the coordinates to figure it out exactly and get it precisely. I'm not going to do that right now because I just need to get it approximately. So I put him right there and then click Done, Edit. And now when I go ahead and copy and paste this one, uh, it will be in the right place. And now what we have is, oops, I need to move that over just a little bit. And then over here, and then over here, and over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on all these and say close gaps. And it will, you know, suck it all back up and move this over to here. And so now we've got a much longer line all together. Hold on, we're going to do this over to here. Close the gaps again. And now when I scroll back over to here and click play, we can actually see Hall in each of those different directions like the hologram. You see how you do this? So all you got to do is, you know, take one line and shrink it down, put it in the right place, and then make a new line of video. You can do as many. I don't think there's a limit to how many lines of video you can do in Wii Video. You just go over here to that plus sign over in the corner and you click plus and uh, it'll add a, a new line of video and then you just repeat it rotate it put it in the right spot rotate it put it in the right spot and when you're all done click on finish and export it out i did it as 480p because i was in a rush but you could do it as 720 if you want to click finish and then save it so i actually loaded this already onto the ipad and i'm just going to click play over here and we're going to switch back over to ipvo and you can see that right over here we've got our our talking head hall floating right above the eye. See, I can take that away and he's gone and there he is. That is my hologram. And I could do this with anything that I could do with a black background or a, uh, a green screen so I can cut the background out of it. 
How cool is that? And now, obviously, I could turn the volume up so we could hear him talking and so on and so forth. But how neat. Now, just imagine this, like, you know, during open house, if you have, you know, the, the hologram of you, uh, you know, like, uh, meeting and greeting parents or each kid has their own little hologram. If you've got a classroom set of iPads, a hologram of the kids welcoming the parents, uh, you know, I mean, from the 25th century, you know, that kind of a thing. You know, there's a lot of fun that we can have with this. Um, and once again, it's not like this in itself is going to raise test scores or completely change all learning and all that but it's another flavor it's another style where all of a sudden instead of just doing the usual you know book report or summary of homework or that kind of thing again and again and again they could do something that's a little bit more fun a little bit more dynamic and the reality is oops it went flying um it doesn't doesn't take much it doesn't take much it's not that hard and the kids can whip this thing together in no time at all so it doesn't need to take an extra amount of class time away from you so it's a, a, a pretty big win for pretty minimal effort you get a lot of bang for the buck and i like that kind of stuff so I think this is kind of fun. I think it's kind of neat. I hope you get a chance to uh, play around with it. Uh, we're going to be making some holograms in my workshop over at ICE. Uh, so maybe I'll get some footage from those and add it into the blog post when I post this up uh, to Teach42. But if you want to see how to make the hologram and uh, you know, if you want more specific directions on how to do this and also more specific directions on how to create the video itself within WeVideo, I'm going to be posting all of that over to Teach42 along with this broadcast. Um, well, hopefully later today or early tomorrow morning, so you can check that out over there. Really fun stuff. Um, so that is about it for this little do-it-yourself hologram episode, per se. Um, I hope you had fun, and I hope you get a chance to do it. If you've ever made one of these uh, and you have some pictures, please send them over to me. I'd love to take a look and uh, see what you did. If you've ever made your own hologram video in particular, definitely let me know. I'd love to see some students um, that have done this kind of stuff. So uh, with that, uh, once again, if you are going to be at any of those conferences that I mentioned in order, ICE, MACE, uh, McCall over in Detroit, Michigan, um, you know, uh, .edu uh, in Monterey, Mexico, or the NSBA conference over in Denver, uh, please uh, drop me a line. Let me know. I would love to get together with you, hang out, grab a beer or some other uh, non-alcoholic drink um, so you don't piss off your school board or anything like that, um, and so on, and uh, love to hang out. So thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon, and uh, another video coming to you tomorrow. Uh, so until then, adios, afuera sin, sayonara, shalom, and uh, goodbye.